Today's video is the first in a new occasional series looking at icons of coffee, classics in the field, things that have endured. And I can think of nothing better to start us off with than the Chemex coffee maker. Now these videos aren't so much pure technique videos, nor are they pure product reviews. They'll have a little bit of those in there, along with a few other bits and pieces. And we'll start with the history of the Chemex. While the Chemex feels like a quintessentially American coffee maker, its inventor was actually born in Germany. Dr. Peter Schlernbaum was drawn to the US by its patent laws, and he was an inventor, and he patented, I think, over 300 different items, though this was by far the most successful and long-lasting of them. He patented the Chemex in 1941, and it was ultimately released and produced in 1942 by the Chemex Corporation. It's an incredibly simple yet beautiful design. It's just a single piece of glass with a wooden collar and a tie. And its distinctive design means that you might have seen it pop up in tons of pop culture on TV and in movies. You might have seen it in an episode of Friends. You might have seen it in Mad Men or even in Interstellar. People really love the Chemex. They formed an emotional attachment to it as a brewer and therefore to the coffee that it makes as well. But let's talk about why some people really don't like the Chemex. And that means we can look at two pieces of its design that I think are distinctive and fundamental. There are other aspects of the design to talk about, be it the little wooden collar or the glass handle on the other version. What I'm interested in looking at initially is the design decision to make this a single piece of glass, to have both the brewing cone and the base all as one thing. That's not particularly common and it actually presents a surprising little challenge. And that challenge is that when you're brewing, it would be possible in theory for an airlock to happen. If air can't freely flow from the bottom chamber to be displaced by the coffee coming in, then it'll build up a little bit of pressure and coffee will stop flowing from the cone into the, into the base below. Now, to counteract that, there are, there are two things here. Firstly, you have this particular channel here that runs all the way down into the base. And that's really designed not just to pour nicely, which thankfully it does do, but also to allow air out of the base section during a brew. But what can happen is the paper can form a perfect seal with the glass all the way around, uh, and then you're in trouble, then you'll stall your brew. Now to counteract that, there is the design of the Chemex papers. So a Chemex paper looks like this. It's a, a very large piece of paper, which is kind of a problem, but it's, it's folded in such a way that when you brew, one side of your cone is much, much, much thicker than the other side of the cone. When you're brewing, you're really supposed to make sure that the thick side is where the, the little channel is, where the air gap is, where the spout is. This means that this paper is less likely to collapse and form a seal. The downside of this design is that you have so much paper. Not only are Chemex papers much thicker, but having a triple ply on one side really does affect the way that the coffee brews. For context, a single Chemex paper weighs just under four and a half grams. A single two cup Hario paper weighs about 1.5 grams. It's literally three times the amount of paper and potentially three times the amount of paper taste if you don't rinse that out. And also three times the kind of clarifying power. Having a lot of thick paper will change the way that your coffee tastes. It will taste cleaner in some ways, right? You'll, you'll definitely remove about as much suspended material as you possibly can. And that's, for most people, that's a good thing. People like a clean tasting cup of coffee. Your filter paper will add a little bit of resistance to uh, the way that the coffee brews to that cone, right? Not only does the water have to get through your bed of coffee, it has to get through the paper as well. What I tend to see is two things as a result. I see people trying to grind just a little bit coarser to get shorter brew times with a Chemex. And as a result, having a slightly weaker brew, I often see people also using higher doses in a Chemex uh, than they would do in say a V60 or a Kalita or another brewer. Ultimately, this is just a mechanism of dealing with the potential for under extraction. This is not a flawed brewer, but you do have to make some accommodations to not get into a spiral of updosing and under extracting. We'll come on to that in just a second. Before I get too much into the technique stuff though, I do want to talk about a couple of the different options that you have and shapes and finishes, I guess. This to me, this is the classic Chemex, right? This shape, this size, and actually this little wooden collar. But I won't lie to you, this collar 
is, is a terrible piece of design in many ways. It's incredibly frustrating to use. To tie and untie this thing, it's not good. It's not fun. It's annoying. To, to have to take it off to put it in the dishwasher or to clean it properly is annoying. And I don't think the wood ages particularly well. But as I just look at it, I think it looks beautiful. I really like the wood color look. And, and I think it photographs well. It just looks great. But the alternative is, is popular with a lot of people, which is this one. And this is the one that doesn't have the wood uh, collar and it just has the glass handle so you have something not hot to hold when you're doing it. Now, I'm not saying that this is ugly or hideous or, or doesn't look good. It's more practical, despite the fact that in theory it's more breakable. But it just doesn't look, it just doesn't look as good as the original Chemex. Now, there is another shape. There's the smaller shape. I would say probably don't bother with it. I don't particularly like that sort of steeply angled brewing dynamic, but I also don't think it has the proportions and, and the just aesthetic loveliness of the original shape and size. Let's talk about technique. Let's talk about how I might recommend you change your brewing technique specifically for the Chemex. Now, a lot of this is based on the V60 technique that I put out there. If you haven't seen that, there's a link up here. I'd recommend watching that before watching this because it'll make more sense. But let's talk about this thing here. Now, I'm gonna say we're gonna keep our dose at 60 grams per liter. I certainly enjoy that. If you like stronger coffee, feel free to change that. Now, one of the key things here is to not try to compensate too much for the additional resistance that the paper adds. In a simple experiment, uh, we brewed a Chemex next to a V60 with the same grind setting, right? Same dose, same pouring technique, and the brew from the Chemex just took much, much, much longer. That's okay. You don't have to compensate and grind much coarser for the Chemex to get that three, three and a half minute brew time. You're gonna have four to five minute brew times brewing half a liter with the Chemex and you're gonna have great tasting coffee. In terms of the bloom, I would do exactly as I do in the V60. Two to one to three to one in terms of bloom water to coffee dose. So 60 grams of bloom to 90 grams of bloom if you're brewing 30 grams of coffee and let that bloom for at least 45 seconds. I would say a similar pouring technique in terms of phases to the V60 video. And at the end, you're gonna do the same thing with a little stir and then a swirl to help the drawdown and have a flat bed. There is one more little hack that I have seen that is actually kind of useful to have in your reserves. Now, I talked about the issue before of what happens if your paper perfectly adheres and sticks to the glass all the way around and you get that kind of airlock. What I have seen people do is use something like a chopstick. And having a chopstick in the brewer seems a little weird, but it does help prevent the paper perfectly sticking to the glass. It will always leave air a space to get out and it will not cause your brew to stall. But know that you are sticking a piece of wood in your coffee. Now you could go for something like a Korean chopstick, which is made out of stainless steel, which is great, or a high quality chopstick will probably be okay, but maybe not a cheap disposable one. Better still really is just to be mindful of this gap, of this spout. Pay attention to it, make sure it doesn't close after you've rinsed your paper and do make sure you rinse your papers for Chemex papers. Just make sure that it's tight across that gap and isn't beginning to fold into it. That's, that's really important. I'll say one more quick thing about the Chemex. One more thing that for me just elevates it a little bit. Coffee looks beautiful in a Chemex. The way that the light shines through coffee in a Chemex, it, it, it is just a little bit special. And it took me a little while to work out why it's like this with a Chemex and not so much with another brewer. And I actually think it's to do with this little base piece of the design here. It just catches the light differently to say a drip decanter and just brings a little bit more color. And hey, we eat and drink with our eyes too. Coffee never looks more vibrant, more red, more beautiful, more delicious than it does in a Chemex. And that matters to me. But I'd love to hear your stories about the Chemex. Tell me about how it fits into your life. Tell me why you love it. Tell me why you hate it. I'd really love to hear from you. Do you have little tips and tricks and hacks that you want to share with the audience? We would love to hear them. I'm going to say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. <laughs>